Hey everybody, let's start on the brand new topic of fluid mechanics, and let's limit our discussion this semester to hydrostatics as opposed to hydrodynamics. So this is like fluid and then, you know, the difference between statics and dynamics. Okay, so let's start with some definitions. Um, there is pressure and there is density and in the context that we're using pressure is some just call it pressure p some force over area so that's like newtons per square meter and we named a newton per square meter after pascal so this is the same as a pascal so this is the SI unit. There are other units for pressure that are not SI units, like you'll see atmosphere. Okay, so let me see, right? This is SI units. Non-SI units would be an atmosphere or like a bar or pounds per square inch or like this is like millimeters of mercury. There are different non-SI units, which you'll encounter in America, especially, and also like in chemistry, like on an espresso machine, the pressure could be like in bars, uh, the ratings for filling up your air in your tire, typically is like PSI, right? You listen to the weather report, the pressures and atmospheres. But just remember that Pascal is the SI unit. Okay, and then density. For our context, density, I'll use the Greek letter rho. This is the Greek letter rho. Is mass per volume. Mass per volume. Okay, so that's kilogram per cubic meter. And just be careful because I know oftentimes in like chemistry, for example, if you have, let's say one gram per CC. So one gram per cubic centimeter. What should the SI units be? Kilograms per cubic meter. So just be careful. One gram per CC is not the same as one kilogram per cubic meter right? Because how many grams in a kilogram? Thousand. How many centimeters in a meter? A hundred. Right? And then that doesn't add up. We needed centimeters cubed. So you have to cube this. Right? So then, right, what do you have here? Kilograms and then grams and grams cancel. Centimeter cube, centimeter cube and then meters cubed. So here you'll have kilograms per cubic meter, but what number? Right, there's one, one, two, three of these, and then one, two, three of these. So it's a thousand kilograms per cubic meter, right? So just be careful with SI units. Okay, so think about, uh, let's see, let's say you have a big tank of water big tank of water. Okay, and then let's take, for example, a, a sample of that, like a cube of the water that's sitting in this tank. And it's static, it's not accelerating. So what are all the forces acting on this cube of water? There's force from the top, the sides, the bottom, all the other sides. And then the cube of water itself has weight. So let me maybe get rid of some of these so it's easier to look at, right? It has weight. So there's the force on the bottom of the cube. Take a look at this. Pressure is force times area. So force is pressure times area. Pressure times area. And this is pressure on the, I'll just call it the bottom of the cube. Then up here, there's 
pressure at the top of the cube, pressure at the side, pressure on the side. Okay, so let's look at this direction. I'll, let's make coordinates, say, like this. So let's sum forces in the x direction, uh, y direction. Okay, so we have pressure at the bottom of the cube times area minus pressure at the top of the cube times area minus the weight equals mass times acceleration. But if this cube is static, so the water is not like flowing around anywhere, zero. And what do we have here? Pressure at the bottom. Let me write it out. Area. Pressure at the top. Area. And then the weight is mg. But now take a look at this. See, density is mass over volume. So that means I can say mass is density times volume. So instead of mg, I can write density times volume times g. Now, about the volume, if this is a cube, then let's say it's a cube here to here is some height. Let me just get rid of this for, so it's easier to see, right? So let's say it's some height h. Then the volume, let's see if you agree with me, the volume is the area times the height. All right, so I'll replace this volume over here with area times height. Area times uh, running out of space, height over here. Okay. Now look at this. The area is non-zero. So I can divide the entire equation by area. And what do we have left? The pressure at the bottom minus the pressure at the top minus rho g h equals zero. And we can write this equation in different ways, but this is the general relationship. Like you can say the pressure at the bottom equals the pressure at the top plus rho g h. I mean, that's one way to write it. I mean, you can move these on whatever side of the equation you want. The point is, which of these numbers is more? The density is positive, g is positive, that's the height, which is positive. So this is a positive number, which means this is more and this is less, right? So the pressure down over here is more than the pressure up over here. Just remember that concept. The farther down in a tank of water in the ocean, farther down you go, the more pressure there is. And really just think there's more water molecules above you crushing you. And how much more? This much more. Okay, so just remember this concept forever. What if you are, let's say, like here's your water and you're over here. This is H. What's the pressure over here? It's more than the pressure over here. And we can say the pressure at, let's say, the surface of the Earth is atmospheric pressure. And that's about 101,000 pascals. So then how much is the pressure here? More, right? It's more. It is atmospheric pressure plus extra. How much extra? The density of this water, g, and however far below the surface you are. Okay? Okay, let's talk about another concept called Pascal's Principle. So let's say you have a tank of water. Okay? The pressure, I mean, according to what we just learned over here, all right, let's say, what's the pressure over here? It's more than the pressure is over here, right? We know how to calculate that. What if we, I move horizontally over here? What's the pressure over here? If it's 
kind of at the same height below the surface, we agree it's the same, right? Because look, see over here, over here is the same. If we go over here, same. So the pressure is the same everywhere as long as it's at the same height. Maybe not so difficult the concept to grasp, like that sounds okay, sounds reasonable. Now here's the weird thing. Imagine the container looks like whatever shape. So we have some weird shaped container like this. Now what is the pressure here? Is the same as the pressure over here? Is the same as the pressure over here? Because they're at the same height below the surface. That is Pascal's principle. It doesn't matter the shape of the container. The pressure here is the same as the pressure here, is the same as the pressure here. Here, same, right? So that's it. The pressure right here is the same as the pressure here. That's all. Remember that concept forever. Why is this useful? Imagine you have something that looks more like say like this. Um, okay, so you have a container of liquid. And now I should have specified a little earlier, a fluid is just some material that can flow. So that includes both liquids and gases. The difference between liquids and gases is that gases are readily compressible, whereas liquids you can approximate as being incompressible. So let's say you have a piston over here and then another piston over here that makes a seal. And then you just fill all of this with a liquid, right? So it's like a hydraulic pump or like a hydraulic jack. And then let's say you put a car over here. And then you just show up here and you push over here with some force. Now, do we agree that the pressure here, well, let's say on, on side number one, is equal to this pressure over here, right? They're at the same height, so they're at the same pressure, according to Pascal's principle. So there's force one, and there's the car over here, force two. But look at the area. This is a small area one, a large area two. And then remember, pressure is like force over area. So pressure is like force over area. Pressure two, force over area. And now think about that. If area one is small and area two is large, then what does that have to do with F1 and F2? Then that means force one can be small and force two can be large, right? A small force applied to a small area, right, is some pressure. It can be equal to a large force over a large area. And that is really like how you can jack up a car with a small amount of force, as long as this area is much smaller than this area. Okay, so you can remember this concept forever. Okay, so let me know if you have other questions. I'll see you in the next video.